lost my water. You okay? Yeah, I'm doing good. Are we starting water? water? You lost your you want Yeah, no, no, I'm okay. So, um, so uh, Tommy Drake is yes. agreed to join us here. Uh, yes. It's between shows. Between shows at the last spot we call Where am I going to go? I have no excuse. I can't say no. That, no, that's exactly right. He can't. But you could, I guess. We are, uh, this is our catchphrase. This is one of the most proud of. We are on your as many as one network. <laughs> so that's, that's what a lot of people are. And, uh, and trust me on this. The nine potheads who watch this thing yeah. are going to be very excited. That's good. And uh, the one gay guy is even going to be more excited. Even more excited. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, this might be the gayest looking at <laughs> I think it is. I think it's looking pretty uh, awful for me. So I, will, I want to say this. Uh, you know, Tommy, thanks for uh, joining us. And I, I do want to say, uh, I've known Tommy since 1998. And uh, Tommy, if, 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 were it not for Tommy, there would not be a Chris Kern. Because Tommy... Uh, I would like to officially apologize for that. <laughs> so, right now it is my fault. It is Tommy's fault. Chris is a comedian. Tommy uh, was the one who encouraged me to try and do comedy, and I really never thought of it. And, uh, you know, I've been... Cursing his name ever since. No, it's been, it's been a good time, man. See, I don't know why you aren't, you're not going to tell the whole story because it's, it's that's why I'm here. Well, tell the story. We were auditioning for the Batman Forever Water Stunt Spectacular at Six Flags Astro World, which is now gone. Which make us both feel old. Yeah. I think the place doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah. And uh, at the audition, you had to do a monologue, a comedic monologue. You're auditioning to be a superhero in a theme park show, and uh, Chris didn't have a monologue prepared. Uh, so he just went up there and talked about how he always thought Batman and Robin were gay. And I thought it was funny because he did it for about five minutes and he backed it up and it was funny. So I said, hey man, you should come out to the comedy club and do that because I think you're fine. And uh, that's how it went down. That's how it went down. And, uh, and Tommy's always been very good to me. He was gracious enough. Uh, his career is a sword. <laughs> no, for real. No, no. <laughs> I've, I've done all right. Yeah. Listen, Tommy's done very well. He's, you know, um, Tommy's. Uh, uh, did you bring your blend? Uh, no, 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 that, no. I know some some people. Some of my opening acts have done pretty good. I've heard that. No, I've heard that though. <laughs> but see, you hear stuff. No. You hear, I, was on, I, I was on a show called Funny Is Funny. Yeah, familiar with that show on uh, CTV, nice. which is uh, yeah. You have twice as many viewers. As funny oh, as really? funny, yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, and I did another show called Comcast Comedy Spotlight. So uh, uh, nobody that will see this gets that. And, uh, so uh, it gives me a whole other demographic. Oh yeah, that's good. You know, so we won't be breaking any contracts. We'll no, 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 there's no conflict of interest. <laughs> no. So, uh, so, and I do know right now you are taking time out because you are working carnival, a carnival cruise ship. I'm working carnival cruise ships a lot, but I try to work comedy clubs about half the time. Cruise ships the other half. And, and I do know, and it is worth mentioning uh, very much. So I do know that you. Uh, and I hope that you don't mind missing. You did open for Cher for 125 stops on her final tour. What was that like? On her farewell tour. That was very exciting. That was completely different. That was my big break. That's why. Yeah. That's why yeah. It really was. You, you blew up. Yes. I got very lucky. You're everywhere. And uh, you know, I'm it working. Was, yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you know, you're 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 working everywhere, and, and I'll be uh, I'll be in Victoria. Are you going to be doing Victoria? Next week. Who books that? I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> I get a call. And can I, I get in there? Can I get in on that gig? Uh, 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 that's cool. Uh, that's I didn't mean to get that so No, no, no. Being yeah. on the road with Cher. What's it being on the road with Cher was cool. Traveling by tour bus is amazing. You know, for yeah. comics, the hardest part is getting there. Yeah. That's your that's your biggest biggest yeah. part of the Victoria gig. Hey, you got to drive. Right? Yeah. Right. You got to drive, and it's like, what, four or five? hundred miles. It's a hundred miles. It's nothing. Well, on the shared tour, it's a tour bus. You get off stage, you walk into the parking lot, you get on your bus, put on your pajamas, go to sleep, wake up, and awesome. you're in the parking lot of the next hotel. Do you have a driver? Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought maybe the bus just, you just sat there. It's not a magical bus. Oh, it's there's a, bus. a driver. Sorry, Pothead. And there's a... <laughs> I get to... Uh, uh, perform for like 15,000 people now, every that's, night. That's got to be amazing. That's different. Yeah. You have to take your time. What's the weirdest thing that happened to you on the road with Cher? Uh, the weirdest thing that happened, usually when you perform for 15,000 people, they pretty much, uh, they're, they're pretty nice to you. Yeah. Usually big crowds like that see and Cher are pretty nice to you. Yeah, so know. every night, I think this is it, I'm done, I'm never going to you know, be back in Houston working the last spot again. You yeah, know? Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm big time now. 15,000 people go nuts for me every night yeah. for 40 minutes. They're screaming, crying, laughing, standing ovations all the time. This is it, I hit the big time. I'm never going back to clubs ever again. That's it. Not to put huge for me, right? Um, until we got to Atlantic City. And I opened for Cher in Atlantic City, and I ate it for 40 minutes for 12,000 people. 
Yeah. And uh, for the whole 40 minutes, for all 12,000 people, I mean, there's not another comic that you're going to interview that will be able to tell you that they ate it for 40 minutes for 12,000 people, and that after they ate it, the camera crew that was shooting it, uh, you know, high quality five camera shoot of me eating it, well, gave me a DVD with Dolby 5.1 sound oh, of me eating it great. for 40 minutes for 12,000 people. Jeez Louise. I don't even know why I just said geez Louise. The very next night we're in Hartford, Connecticut and everything's fine again. They just said, yeah, Atlantic City is usually pretty rough on uh, opening acts. Would you say that's the worst gig you've ever done? No. No. It's, it's worse than that. Because after that gig, yeah. I, I still walked out to a tour bus and had a little bit of Jack Daniels and some bus food. They had some pizza for us. And nice. Bus. I woke up at the next night and I got paid enough money that it didn't matter. I needed, that, yeah. I needed every, every night on tour share. Uh, no, no, I've done some horrible gigs. Oh, uh, the uh, Venetti's, the little Italian or Greek restaurant with the Italian name in Mississippi in a place called uh, uh, Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, where Elvis is from, right? Yeah, yeah, that's where he was uh, born. Yeah. Elvis is coming on the show next week. <laughs> and uh, the Tupelo, Mississippi gig was just the back of a restaurant, you know, and uh, I, I went up there and uh, they did, they just, uh, they were listening to me and not liking me. Yeah. And that's the worst. If, if people are just loud, yeah. it doesn't bother me, but these people were paying attention to me, listening to me, getting what I was trying to do, and just dismissing me as untalented, not funny. And uh, I was literally in my head, I was planning on getting off stage, going to the nice old man that owns a place, and because we had another show the next night, yeah. and saying, you know what, I, I apologize, you don't have to pay me, I'm sorry, I'll tr try to get somebody else to come out here, because that was horrible. And I get off stage and I say, listen, I'm sorry. He goes, hey, you don't have to apologize. You did your job. You do what we hired you to do. You know what I think the problem was? This guy says to me. And I says, uh, kind of afraid to ask. He goes, I think they just didn't think you were funny. Yeah. He goes, but you did what you were supposed to do. You went up there. You did your act like a trooper. That's awesome. Yeah, so he was nice to me. And the next night I changed it up and it actually worked. But that was the worst. That was the worst show. That's the only time I've ever gotten off stage and thought to myself, I owe these people money because they should not have had to sit through that. I can't imagine the contrast. The Fifteen thousand happy people with share, and then those jagoffs. Twenty-five people right. in Mississippi that mm -hmm. just didn't want it. And when you blow up, though, and you, because you will blow up, uh -huh. you know, you got the, the complete package. When you do blow up, <laughs> they'll they'll look and go. Y'all remember when that queer was? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. They will probably use that word. Yes. Yeah, that's too below. That's, and, yeah. and, 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 and that is not done by in any way that uh, that you're uh, gay, Tommy. Because we all know your wife is a very lovely lady. She's. Uh, well, it's hard to be a comic's wife because you know the, the job is weird. And, and your wife's like, hot. I never recognized her. She always looks different. And there's this thing between me and Chris's wife. Like every like every six months, I'll get off stage at a show in Houston, and this hot chick will give me a hug. And be like, hey, Tommy, what's going on? And talk to me like she knows me. I'm like, what? It's like it's Chris's wife. Why don't you ever recognize me? Yeah, she's the devil. I, you're so you're so pretty. I've never looked right at you, so I don't know what you look like. I am a very fortunate man. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you're like we're both lucky. We both got lucky. Yeah, yeah. Your wife is a lovely, very nice, and I've had cocktails at the house, mm -hmm. martinis uh, at the Drake house. Yeah, yeah, we nice. did that. Always been uh, very good to me. Yeah. And, and when you do blow up, also too, you will need someone to open for you. You know, and I will. Uh, I will need an opening act. And I'm ready for it. I'm up to the challenge. And uh, that'll be good. And I will also need a double. Uh, yeah, that would be time. good. And, uh, we can put on sunglasses and a hat and walk around and act like they're me. So if someone's going to punch you in the neck, I can take the neck punch. You can take a neck punch because <laughs> you have the karate background oh, that yeah. I don't have, you know, so I'll... And I'll be honest, uh, honestly, uh, now Tommy, what you tell you, Tommy actually got the part of the Riddler. I played the Riddler in the Batman Forever Waterstone. Yeah, actually. even though I was more qualified, I think we both agree. Yeah. But yeah. I was a little more qualified, and, I, and uh, uh, more Tom, qualified. Tommy edges me out because he has more theme park experience at the time. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what it is, yeah. You know, that's, a, yeah. that's a humbling experience, though. You know, uh, not getting in on something like that <laughs> <laughs> because, because it's ridiculous you know, as it really is. I want it really. You bad. want the gig, yeah, yeah because it's a ridiculous. It's a, you're like I hope I, I hope I'm at least qualified for this. 
But what good came out of it for me was that you know that uh, I, I went down and I got laughs, and uh, and here we are, almost a decade later. Yeah. And I'll a whole big part of that to you and uh, and the all six potheads that are watching the show again. That's great. Or uh, excited, that's great. you know, like you. You did kind of really mentor me and, and provide a real so so on the you know you don't want to get old Barbara on you, but, but dude, I do I do want to say thanks. Well, you thanks. Know, that's I, uh, I, that's I'm glad and I'm proud when I hear that you're working everywhere. So that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Well, I think mean, that's good. Victoria. Yeah. You know. Hey, so, that's it's you're working. You I know. guess the only other thing I want to ask is, do you have anything? What is your best story from the road? Because one of the things where I was, like the like the the best story. What is the thing that, that that like you know you ran into a famous celebrity and spilled something on them or something cool? Like what's the weirdest famous like? Something cool. Yeah. Actually, something, you know what, man? I should have been I should have been more prepared for this interview. I should have told I've you. Had, I was well, no, I've had a lot of very cool things happen to me on the road, but the first thing that pops into my head. And we haven't talked about this yet, but I did this tour with a couple other friends of ours, this hell gig. We did 50 shows in 50 states in 50 days. Okay. Wow. And we did, we left, we, our first night was Beaumont, and uh, we went around and every night we drove to a different state, did another show that night in that state. And, uh, and then we flew to Alaska, flew to Hawaii, that was it. Well, about halfway through, we didn't know if we were going to make it or not, and we're going into the uh, mountains of uh, Kentucky do a show in Prestonburg, Kentucky at a Holiday Inn bar. And this is show number 25. This is the halfway point. We didn't think we were going to make it this far, but we're pretty miserable. We're dying for a real crowd. And you fit, you know, if you're going to play all of America, you're probably guessing that the dumbest crowd is going to be in the hill country in Kentucky. And we get to Prestonburg, Kentucky, and the place is packed. And all these people know who we are because they've been following us on the internet because they have nothing else to do in Prestonburg, Kentucky. And they never miss the comedy show, and they know who's coming six months out. Even if it's a no-name, like Tommy Drake or Chris Turner, they know. So they find it online, and they're following our story, and they're hearing about all the trials and tribulations of playing 50 States in 50 Days. And they figure out they're the halfway point, and they threw us like the greatest rock star party that I've ever been part of, and treated us like celebrities, and they were the greatest crowd ever. And it was touching to know that there's when you do something like this, you know, when you interview your buddy in the back of the comedy club and put it out there, you know, or when you write like a blog online, it's very touching to know that there's people that you don't even know that are reading it and they're excited that you're coming to Victoria. I, I think I think that we or Prestonburg. It does feel good when it happens, and I think the uh, you know the the, the the great part of it is. You, you, you like the moment, it's good, but later on in retrospect, you realize that none of those bastards work for HBO. No, they don't. So, no, they don't. so no, they don't. really, but, yeah. it's not going to be good. Well, Tommy, yeah. um, <laughs> I, I yeah, do. Yeah, because no, what, what you're saying, real quick, what you're saying is you always have your best shows when nobody's watching. Exactly. And then when, whenever somebody's watching, or they're, you know, if you, if you see a comic doing well, a young comic, and you want them to stop doing well, just point a camera at them. Yeah. You know, if you're going to document somebody doing well, it never comes out, I've no. noticed. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, you know, man, thank you so much for uh, taking time out and, uh, and hanging out with us. And by the way, also two things for uh, Lucky Larry, who is, uh, as always, on the cameras. Lucky Larry and the Television Tom could not be here tonight unless I kick Television uh, Tom. Okay. He's uh, in jail. This television yeah, Tom. Television Tom. Tom. Yeah. He's got a problem. He's a bit of an addict. He uses heroin and some other ah, So Lucky Larry gets his nickname because he's the one that's not in jail. Exactly, and, uh, and he works for free. Yeah. So we're very lucky. Yes, yes. yes. All right, Tommy, thanks a million. Thank I appreciate it. I got a show you. to do. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thanks.